Welcome to the special broadcast here on News Mobile. A big announcement has been made, an announcement that will affect 35 lakh students. Class 10 board exams have been cancelled and class 12 exams have been deferred, CBSC board. And joining me are students who are in class 10, in class 12, in CBSC board class 12, uh, CBSC board class 10, and also ICSC board uh, class 10 as well, uh, joining us to discuss all, uh, in, in this in these times, in these COVID times, a big announcement which has been made by the government, uh, uh, something that uh, let's ask these students, did they really expect this announcement to come in? Let me ask all of you, uh, especially for the ones who are in class 10 first, this, did this announcement make you worry or was it a relief for all of you? The class 10 students can go first. Sure. Um, I wasn't particularly surprised when the announcement came. I think most of us were expecting this to come because I don't think there was any real way for the government to be able to actually hold the exam safely with the case search going on. And I think most of us were relieved because we know that there are other ways to get our class 10 grades out. We know that the CBSE is developing some alternative objective metric. And we think most importantly, yeah, we will have another shot from class 12. This isn't going to have the biggest impact on our admissions. And I think a lot of us are relieved because the pressure was really getting to a lot of us. And importantly, a lot of us weren't really being able to study with the focus that is required for exams that are this important. Right. So for you, uh, Siddhant, it was a relief. We have one more class 10 student, CBSC board, Inika. Inika, what about you? I were think, you relieved or were you, are you worried now? I think like Siddhant said, we were expecting the boards to be cancelled. There was no way that the exam was going to be conducted with the cases on the rise. Um, I would agree with him saying that it was a relief for us because um, we've been studying the whole year online and it was extremely unnerving and anxiety inducing to think about giving an exam offline after a whole year of um, online studying. So, right. it, yeah. So it was more of a relief uh, as of now for both of you, it's more of a relief, right? Um, okay, now let's move on to the class 12 students. CBSC board, your exams have been deferred and the announcement will come later whether they will, they, you guys will have the exams so or you will not have the exam. So we have uh, Stuti Rastogi, class 12, and we also have Parth Sarthi, class 12. Stuti, why don't you go first? Uh, exams have been deferred. What, what was the first reaction when this news came in today? Were you surprised? Uh, actually, I was not happy with with the decision although i was expecting this to happen because we have been preparing a whole year for this and i think in class 12 we are expected to show this much maturity that we can take all the precautions and give the exams although the covid cases on, are on a rise so i was expecting but i think we're mature enough to handle the situation as okay. completely okay this Paar, was my what name. about you Parsati? I do, uh, you know, like my reaction was similar to that of Stuti and I do agree with her. And, you know, I mean, with the COVID cases on the rise, we were all expecting the, the boards to be pushed back. But, you know, I, like, I agree with the government that there was, uh, like, there is an necessity okay. to push them back. However, you know, the news is slightly disappointing because, you know, we were at the peak of our preparation and now there's some apprehension to you know, when the boats will happen and, you know, whether we would have enough time between the two different boats to basically, you know, switch gears. Right. Also, we have uh, Parth Malik, 10th, uh, 10th class student, ICSC board. Parth, what do you feel about yeah. that? So, you know, CBSC board uh, students are getting, uh, I wouldn't call it an easier way out, but there's some clarity for them. But what about you? Yeah, I really support the decision made by uh, the board for the CBIC students and I really hope that ICSC will also follow because as the previous speaker said that COVID cases are on the rise and the thing that I feel is that in, in a situation like COVID there's so much of uncertainty. What if somebody, someone in someone's family gets COVID? What if a student that gets COVID to people who met him that day then also quarantine? And the thing is that this is not a one-time exam, right? We go five, six, seven, eight times. So if the people have to quarantine, then they may miss a lot right. of exams. So there's this there's no clarity right now on how on how and what will happen if somebody gets COVID. And since the cases on the rise, I believe that they should be cancelled. Right. Uh, so uh, you think they they should be cancelled? Yes, they're because not to. yeah, right. because we we have worked hard, and I agree with the previous speakers as they said that we are at the peak of our preparation. But I guess for us as tenth graders, 
as Sidhan said, it's not really the biggest thing in the world right now. And I think we can, uh, we have various other modes of assessments. Like when COVID eased, there were a lot of internal assessments that were taken. And even in our school, we were given given a couple of sets of exams. So I think the schools right. can find a great way out and give us marks based on those internal assessments that were taken. Right. Okay. Now this one is for the class 12 students. Uh, if your exams were cancelled, how do you see it impacting your future prospects? What kind of criteria can the government implement which will help you, all of you? Because a lot of class 12 students would like to perhaps go abroad and uh, they would be, of course, uh, they, they were expecting to give their board examinations. It's a very important board examination, the class 12 one. Uh, Stuti, want to go first on that? Uh, I think if the board exams are cancelled, I will not be happy because uh, I really want to give exams and it's not only abroad, uh, about the abroad situation that will get affected, but also the admissions in DU and all uh, will also get affected. And we are not sure on what criteria the school will give us marks and will the marks be to, up to our expectations or not. Mm. So I'm hoping that they don't cancel the exams. And plus, uh, I'm hoping a clear cut decision on by 1st June at least that they tell us whether they're holding the exams or not. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, good point there, Skuti. You did say that you're not sure how will uh, your internal ass assessments, how will they really make up those marks if your uh, exams do get cancelled, the class 12 ones. So, Part Sarthi, what do you have to say about that? Are you comfortable with uh, internal ass assessments marks uh, being used as your class 12 marks in case your exams get cancelled? Yeah, so if the exams do can get cancelled, you know, I definitely wouldn't be comfortable because this year it was entirely online. So, you know, our studies did get impacted a lot because of the online, the new medium suddenly being switched to, uh, switched to the online medium. Therefore, you know, I do feel that the board exams for at least for class 12 shouldn't be cancelled in any sort of condition. And they should definitely give, uh, you know, clear cut instructions whether it would happen and when it would happen because for online, sorry, for, for abroad admissions, I like I, I got to know that, you know, unless we get the term sheet, uh, we cannot actually enroll in classes over there. Right. Uh, so uh, overall, I want to get a quick, uh, you know, answer from all of you. Uh, do you think students should be given the vaccination so that they can go back to school and resume activities? The younger population, the student pop population, uh, just a quick yes and no, um, and, a, and why do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Let's start with Stuti. Uh, yes, I think they should be given vaccination and they should be sent to school with all precautions. Right. Uh, Siddharth? No, I think there are two problems. Number one, the only vaccine in the world which is actually approved for children below the age of 18 is Pfizer, which is incredibly hard to store and incredibly hard to distribute and not widely available in India. So you don't even have a safe vaccine to give to the kids in India. But more importantly, we are not the, let, like, let's be very honest, maybe the 12th grade is sure, but we are not the priority right now, right? Like you have to get right. the country back on, you have to get the economy reinvigorated. There are a lot of other things that need to happen to have our society fully functioning before you actually go ahead and vaccinate the kids. Okay, Parth, what do you think? Parth Sarthi? Well, I think they should, I think right now I do agree with Sidon that, you know, we should prioritize the people who really need it. And, you know, for COVID, the children aren't, uh, like, if you see the cases among the children, there aren't that many as compared to the other population sectors. So I think they should be given only after a sizable population of the elderly and the frontline workers. Yeah, so you right. think that the elder, elder ones should get it first. Inika, do you think that the younger population, the students should get the vaccine so they can resume their studies and, you know, go outside? Uh, first of all, Parth, um, cases have been on the rise in the younger population. However, I don't believe that children are the priority right now. Like Sadhan said, um, it, the people who really need the vaccine should be given the vaccine first. And we also have to keep in mind that we are still in the initial stages of the vaccine rollout in India. So it wouldn't be very sensible for us to be giving the vaccine to children right now. Right. Parth Malik, what do you think? Do you yeah. think... Uh, yeah, I think a balanced approach needs to be taken because right now the elderly are, uh, most of them are on their second dose. They are about to take their second dose. So I think we can also start vaccinating children because as we've read uh, these days, a lot of vaccines are actually going waste. So I don't understand why they should go waste. And although right now it's not being developed, but once testing is done, I believe that even students can be vaccinated like all others because it also boosts economic growth because there are a lot of 
the support staff who are actually unemployed right now, like our bus drivers, like the conductors, like the didis and bhaiyas in our school, right? It's not only the students and the teachers. So it also supports the economy and the students get a wholesome experience because although online is an alternative, but it's not complete school. It, does, it doesn't give that feeling. And therefore, I think the learning, there's a learning gap which can only be fulfilled by physical school. Right, right. So like Inika had mentioned that uh, a lot of the younger population is also getting COVID-19. The cases are on the rise. So what precautions are you guys taking to, uh, you know, in your daily life, day-to-day -day life, what steps are you taking to stay safe? Uh, of course, virtual classes, but uh, at home or are, are you a lot of a lot of youngsters, in fact, are still going out. Uh, some are, some are not. Uh, they're socializing. Some of them are socializing. Of course, if there's a um, now there's a night curfew in Delhi. But uh, when it comes to personal safety from COVID-19, what special steps are you taking? Let's start with uh, Stuti. Um, at a personal level, uh, I I sanitize all the things that are coming from outside, be it the deliveries or anything. Uh, we keep uh, them in quarantine for 48 hours. And plus, uh, I'm washing my hands and I generally don't go out that much. So I really don't need to, you know, uh, take that much precautions with that. Siddhant, what about you? I, I'm asking this question because our youngsters do like to socialize. They do like to go out, you know, play outdoor games. So uh, that is why I know it's difficult for all of us. So that's why I'm asking you, uh, maybe what, what are you not doing now like you used to do to stay safe? Uh, Siddhant, you can go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, I you think um, multiple things. Number one, going out was incredibly cut down, right? Mm -hmm. Any level of socializing, any level of interacting with individuals outside of a very small and very specific bubble of people you trust was completely stopped by my family and by me personally for the vast majority of the pandemic. Now, currently, I'm living in a house with three COVID patients and I myself may possibly be positive because I haven't been well for the past two days. Obviously, that's led to like an intensification of security precautions. I haven't left my room because we don't know whether that's going to go and infect somebody else in the house constantly i'm wearing a mask there's constant disinfectation and that's all really important and i genuinely think that like kids our age who are going out and socializing even like breaking the night curfew and going out and socializing are just contributing to the caseload because like they aren't going to be impacted because the virus can't hurt them that badly they simply have a stronger immune system but that means that the virus is going to go back home and it's going to infect other individuals and they're going to be the ones who are going to be impacted yeah exactly exactly you know it's very we have to be more responsible as the younger population because we do have elders at home apart Sarthi what about you yeah so you know obviously as being the kids of the family I think one important role that we have taken on is you know stopping complacency so basically sometimes our family members you know family members you know family friends we see them going out and then you know sometimes it falls on us surprisingly when it should to actually remind them no you shouldn't do it no, you shouldn't go out. And that and that I feel is an important goal because unless every single member of the family is like, you know, actively trying to stop COVID or actively trying the you know, other people of your family to, you know, sort of take stupid decisions, you need to sort of have the entire platform. On a personal level, I think, you know, stopping other people from being complacent is something that I look to do and I look to basically educate them sometimes. All right. Uh, Inika? Inika, are you taking the lead here to uh, stay safe? Yeah, so um, as you know, as uh, soon as lockdown was announced and as soon as we heard about the virus, of course, all social interaction was cut down, all extracurriculars, all activities involved going out and interacting with people were immediately shut down. However, I feel like especially, um, you know, the younger people have been have not been paying um, such close attention to the COVID-19 guidelines. And I feel like it's completely our responsibility to um, be the ones who are um, actively working towards um, a solution and taking responsibility for our own actions. So, of course, the virus won't harm um, a younger person as badly as it would harm someone who's older and patients with comorbidity, comorbidities. But um, it's up to us to stop the virus from spreading. So, um, yeah. Cutting down on social interaction, it's not that much, it's not that big of an ask when it comes to the health and safety of um, our family yeah. members and rest of the people. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Parth Malik, uh, what about you? What have you given up um, 
to uh, stay safe. We can't hear you, Parth. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Is it? Yes, Parth. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so can you repeat the question? My audio disconnected for a second. Yeah, Pat. So what have you given up? Uh, yeah, what, what I've given have... up is I've given up going out. I've given up going downstairs to play because uh, that's a part of our daily routines, right? But I think we as students, I think all of us became a bit complacent like one or two months back because the COVID cases were on a sharp decline. And then a lot of, lot of people actually started going out and meeting their friends. And they thought COVID was basically over because that was the time when... That the news that the news start coming out that there are a variety of vaccines which are going to be introduced. So all of us thought it was going to end, and I think we became complacent at some level because some of us maybe didn't actually go out and all, but we thought this time is coming to an end, and therefore we can start relaxing a bit. Yeah. And that's why I think that led to the rise in cases because there were there were a lot of festivals like Holi and all at that time. So therefore, I think people participated in those festivities and met met other people, visited public places and that's why that uh, led in the yeah. rise. And I personally, what I've done is I've prioritized staying inside than going outside. I think I've chosen my health over actually socializing and although it's been a long time, I, I think this is the right thing to do and that's why I keep doing it. And in spite of the decline, I uh, stayed at home the whole time, didn't go out much. Didn't right. even, yeah, yeah, didn't do what yeah, I used that's to. Great. That's great uh, part and uh, Thank you for all the answers. Of course, this is all helping all of us fight Corona and helping India fight Corona. Yeah. Okay, so like, like we mentioned, in the past one year, it was virtual schooling for everybody, online classes, definitely something different than in-class in class classes, which are the physical classes. Um, how difficult, maybe, maybe one of you can answer that. Uh, I also want to ask how difficult was it to, you know, uh, to have virtual schooling and no social interactions at all, hardly any social interactions. I'm sure you guys, that you guys didn't meet your classmates like you used to uh, pre-corona times. So how did you turn, you know, yourself into, you know, like have a more positive state of mind? What activities did you indulge in to be more positive in these times? Uh, I want first. I want uh, Suti to answer the first question, which I asked. Suti, go ahead. Was, was it difficult? Uh, yeah. Yeah, was it difficult? There was no to... doubt that the there was no doubt that the virtual school was definitely difficult than the physical school. Yeah. Because firstly, in virtual school, there is a lot of connectivity problem. Yeah. Secondly, we cannot indulge in a like mischief activities that we used to do with our friends and then all that talking and sitting on the last bench doing uh doing something that's not related to the classwork yeah we're all missing it fun uh thirdly when i was giving the online exams the most uh, problem the most important problem i faced was submitting the documents on time because i was giving the exam on an online platform and it took so much of time to upload that particular document that at the time uh, for my exam got over these were all the issues and the teacher couldn't see us and she's like why are you not showing your face and all that so the scolding was on the peak so that's that was really right so, so, yeah, so let's quickly go through uh, uh Siddharth Bhatt, Inika and Bhatt Malik uh, how did you how did you keep yourself uh, you know like engaged while virtual school was uh, on let's start with uh, Siddharth of course so I think like while online schooling was very tough and like for example my school personally gave a lot of support and gave us a lot of opportunities to explore a lot of events and activities within school i think personally for myself um one of my biggest recourses during the pandemic was the fact that i extensively debate and a lot of debate tournaments went online and not wow, only did that give me <laughs> okay that's great, not only yeah. did that uh, give me an avenue in which I could, you know, have a creative out outlet, not only could I compete over there, but it also had like a massive sense of community. And I think a lot of things are just like working towards alleviating the problem through organizations, through like charity fundraising, things like that. I think a lot of these things were particularly what got me through oh. what could have been a very good. That's big. good. That's great. Uh, Parth, what about you, Parth Sarthi? So, you know, I to Suti's point, obviously, there were a lot of technical difficulties during the virtual medium, but I think a bigger thing to focus was the mental block that you suddenly had to overcome when you switched to the online medium, because, you know, right now when you go to school, you're physically there, yeah, and, you know, the teacher is right in front of you, you do sort of focus more, 
and switching to you know an online medium from your own home where you might as well be you know on your own bed in class so that was definitely you know you had to overcome that mental block and come back to the same focus that you gave in in so school. how did you stay positive about perhaps you know like uh, of course it must be comfort sitting at home and uh, and you know attending your class but how did you stay positive during, during this time so i think one one thing was you know having support of your friends because all of them were going through the same thing as you so actually talking to them a lot and you know discussing everything with them how are you coping with this and you know having that support structure definitely helps you and i think okay. just talking about it definitely you know alleviates a lot of the mental block right that's great enika um so as far as staying positive is concerned um the first thing is that i am a ballet dancer so i immediately shifted to dancing online although it was kind of difficult to um shift an activity that really depends on space to an online medium um i think it was totally worth it the second thing is that we are a very connected generation so i don't think that social interaction was um that impacted of course it was hard to um adapt to the um online version of it but i don't think it was that much of an issue and the last thing that i would like to say is that um at a time where people were losing jobs and flocking back to um their cities and the country was filled with uncertainty there were people losing lives and falling ill i don't think that interacting socially and being able to go back to school was really that big of a deal if it meant that um we would be helping these people out okay yeah that's great uh, ballet online ballet that's pretty interesting part more like what did you do yeah so me so i found zooming out of online classes extremely easy i was really susceptible to it at the start so what i did was i started like interacting more in class like just saying yes no or asking stuff because i personally felt that if somebody else did it it so suddenly broke the monotony of the class because if you keep hearing the teacher's voice for a long time you get bored and it becomes monotonous so hearing a child's voice suddenly you uh, you start paying more attention and that's why that's what i thought actually helped me whenever somebody else asked something my attention again got focused to the class and our school basically organized mentoring sessions and circle time sessions each day when the teachers asked us what how we were doing how you we were coping with the stress and then what all what all new things you we were learning so it was really helpful that way and we also had a lot of events like annuals debates performing arts through the online medium so i think all of that really helped to to transfer the school experience to the online right. medium. Well, that's great, uh, and with that, we wrap up this special edition uh, on News Mobile. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Stuti, Sidhant, Parth, Inika, and Parth Malik for joining us, and all the very best for your future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.